Hi everybody. I wanted to do a book review on uh, a novel that I just read very recently um, and I'm really excited about. Um, I learned about this book a few weeks ago when it was announced that Robert Zemeckis would probably be make, directing the feature film adaptation and would be his first live action film since Castaway, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, I love Robert Zemeckis. I think he's a terrific director, but I'm kind of tired of all the motion capture animated movies, Polar Express, Beowulf, the Scrooge thing with Jim Carrey. Um, he, he's made some terrific live action movies, and I'd like to see him get back into that because they're much easier for me to relate to. And um, he's picked a good one here. Uh, there are echoes of Back to the Future in this, but um, the, uh, the film uh, precedents that I can cite would be Peggy Sue Got Married, Source Code, and Forrest Gump as well. Put a little Forrest Gump in there, why not? Um, the book is called Replay. It is by Ken Grimwood, uh, and it was published in 1986, which, strangely enough, is the same year that Peggy Sue Got Married was released in theaters. Um, Replay um, is about uh, a man named Jeff, who, when he's 43 years old, is working in his office one day. All of a sudden, he drops dead of a heart attack. And when he wakes up, he's 18 years old again. He's back in college. He looks around. It's 1963. He's going, what the heck is going on here, huh? What's up? What is happening to me? Eventually he figures out that he's mind, his mind has traveled back in time to his younger self and he has the opportunity to relive all these years over again. So that's exactly what he does. Um, he places a few careful bets uh, with um, long shots uh, that he knows will win because he saw them win the first time around, makes himself a lot of money. Uh, has himself uh, uh, some girlfriends and uh, he um, uh, ends up uh, marrying a society woman and starting a, uh, an investment company, makes himself tons and tons of money, has a daughter who turns out uh, to possibly be a piano prodigy at the age of 13. But when he turns 43 again, BAM! Once again he drops dead of a heart attack, despite the fact that his doctors assured him there was nothing wrong with his heart, and BAM! He's 18 year old, years old again, back in college. He goes, wow, <laughs> why, uh, why doesn't it end there? I mean, uh, I've already done all this all over again. What am I going to do now? This time around, he decides to marry his college sweetheart, and they have some kids, and they're very happy together. But once again, once he turns 43, he dies again and goes back to 18 years old. Uh, and <laughs> he's well and truly sick of doing this, you know, because... At this point, he's lived about 50 years longer uh, than, uh, than he, he would have. Um, but uh, it is upon his third replay, as he calls it, that he discovers the existence of another person who might also possibly be a replayer. Uh, and this was the part that really sort of made me jump for joy because it's movie related. <laughs> he goes um, to see a new film, a movie that never existed in any of his previous replays called Starseed. Uh, and it's sort of an undersea version of 2001 is how it's described. They don't go into a great deal, uh, the author doesn't go into a great deal of detail about what the plot of the film is, but involves extraterrestrials and intelligent dolphins and their connection to humanity. And as the story goes, it's the biggest movie ever made. This is one year before Jaws came out. The movie comes out in 1974, one year before Jaws. And he looks at the credits and it says directed by Steven Spielberg, you know, produced by George Lucas written by Pamela Phillips. Wait a minute, who's Pamela Phillips? So he goes to Los Angeles and he tra tracks down Pamela Phillips and he meets her and he tells her what's happened to him because the exact he figures the exact same thing has happened to her because this film did not exist before. There was no star C in any of his previous replays and there certainly wasn't the first time around. So he deduces that she is the person who is responsible for writing and producing this picture. She must be another replayer and in fact she is. So the two of them, they sit down, they catch up, and talk about what their experience has been like so far, and they end up basically replaying together. When the time comes for them to die and go back to the beginning, to their younger years, they find each other again as soon as possible and continue to live their lives together because they're the only two people in the world that they know are, are doing this kind of thing. Um, I have to say, uh, first off, uh, that this is a third-person narrator uh, book, which means that it's narrated from an omniscient point of view. Although it's largely devoted towards Jeff's perspective, there are large sections devoted to Pamela and her own perspective and experience. Um, but most of what we see, we see through Jeff. Um, and uh, they have a lot of sort of uh, uh, 
they, they try different things as they replay again. They say, well, maybe we should seek out other people like, like us by placing a personal ad that only another replayer would understand. Or maybe we should just go public and announce it to the news and hopefully the scientific community will come to us and want to, uh, you know, offer theories as to why this is happening. Um, uh, as far as the film goes, Starcy, the way to describe it really doesn't sound like something that would be a huge hit because it's supposed to be this massive box office hit that everyone just across the world just loves to death. And um, uh, given the way they describe it, it's a little bit tough to swallow. I think, uh, you know, an adventure, you know, a more straightforward adventure with lots of great special effects for their time. Um, would probably uh, would probably do, do better. I um, don't know whether or not they'll keep that aspect of the film, but I think uh, that it would be wise if they're going to do a star seed of film, the film within the film, uh, when replay becomes a motion picture, that they show as little of the actual film as possible, you know, preferably none, because there's just no way that it can live up to anybody's expectations. It'll end up looking a little bit silly, and it'll come off like one of those movies within a movie that you see in like Tropic Thunder or In-N-Out or something like that that just basically, you know, looks a little stupid. Uh, the other alternative would be to turn Starcy into a book. We've got this novel, Replay, which has a film within the novel, Starcy. So for the film, why not turn Starcy in, into an actual novel that everyone reads and just loves and wins the Pulitzer and stuff like that? No one would have to read any passages out of it if they didn't want to. Um, anyway, that's just my opinion. I'm sure Zemeckis has something in mind for that, uh, if he's planning on, if he does do that. I think he's also going to be doing a live action film with Denzel Washington as well. I'm not sure, 100% sure which one's coming first, but I hope Replay comes first because I'm very excited to see how they pull off the uh, aging and the different time periods, of course, but most particularly the casting of the actors. Um, the actors basically um, range in age from 14 years old for Pamela to 43 for Jeff, and, and they basically cover this 25-year span um, for each of them as they concurrently, as they jointly replay over and over again and experience all these, you know, multiple lifetimes. I think they go through um, the whole gamut eight or nine times. You know, it's a long, 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 long time. So they, they, they live for a couple of centuries at least. Um, by their own by their own perspective, um, but the question is whether or not they'll cast younger actors and make them look older, or cast older actors and use special effects to make them look younger, or maybe cast them in between, maybe uh, early thirties, late twenties, something like that. I'm really not sure, but um, I like this book a lot. I think that the um, dialogue is perhaps not totally convincing, or at least it, it, it doesn't really seem. It seems a little bit too uh, flowery and a little bit too something a little too overcooked to really be uh, uh, um, uh, viable or, or, or uh, plausible as, as just a regular conversation. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's the author. That's the author's voice and they'll probably, you know, do a lot of, you know, uh, rewriting of dialogue as the uh, film comes about. I mean, the, uh, the, the storyline, the course of events might be totally different for the, um, for the film itself. It might be just a, uh, um, you know, just the basic premise that they're taking, and they'll redo a lot of uh, the specific events, um, which I wouldn't be surprised by, but I hope they keep some of the stuff because it's very interesting. Um, so all in all, I like the book quite a lot. Um, I burned through it in 48 hours, read the entire thing in 48 hours. This is the fastest I've ever read an original novel, just because I was so excited to see what happened next. Um, and I um, really uh, enjoyed it a lot, and I'm amazed that I hadn't heard of it before, but, uh, you know, because it was published uh, in the uh, mid eighties. Um, I'm only just getting around to it now just because of this movie thing. But, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It hasn't been made into a TV movie or, or sort of has, you know, there are a number of movies like this. Groundhog Day is what everyone cites most when they, uh, when they talk about, or, you know, when the, uh, when the media talks about, uh, what the premise of the book is. And it's more like Groundhog Quarter Century. But, um, you know, Peggy Sue Got Married, I think is, is the closest, uh, 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 film uh, precedent to this just because of the whole going back from middle age to teenagerhood uh, is, uh, is well explored in Peggy Sue Got Married. I always like to speculate about what I would do when I would go back in time. If I did to go back in time, I'd like to go back to like age four and just like redo everything, you know, right from the beginning. That would be cool. But not everything, everything. I won't go back to when I'm in diapers and everything like that. Four years old. Four years old would be good. Um, but, you know, obviously that's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, enjoyed this book quite a lot and uh, I would recommend it. Um, I think it's uh, very, very interesting and oftentimes quite suspenseful. Um, looking forward to the film as well. 
And I hope that uh, this uh, video gets as many views as my Dear John video because I did that one way before the movie came out and accumulated a lot. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, that's my take on Replay by Ken Grimwood. Uh, and uh, yes, I do recommend it. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.